1982, one of Endurance Racing's most celebrated eras began, the enigmatically named Group C. By the time the formula ended in the early 90s, it had created some of the most iconic racing cars the world's seen. Silk-cut Jaguars, screaming Mazda Rotaries, home crowd hero Peugeots. But at the centre of it all, and usually at the front of the grid, there was Porsche. Porsche dominated the Group C era, winning Le Mans every year on the bounce from 1982 to 1987. Firstly with the famous 956, and then the car it evolved into, the 962. So to celebrate Group C's Big 4-0, Goodwood Members Meeting has amassed the biggest number of 956s and 962s in one place at one time since their heyday, perhaps ever. There are 20 cars here and, somehow, Car Magazine finds itself right among them at the wheel of this particularly special 962. So let's take a closer look at this incredible car. Hardly surprising there's such a crowd around it here in the paddock at Goodwood. There's no missing that bright red, bright yellow livery. None of this is stickers. This is all hand-painted, hand-templated stuff. And Porsche actually had the original designer from the 80s, Robert Powell, who did the original graphics, back to recreate this by hand for this car. You might also notice the words, or the letters I should say, PDK up here on the windscreen. Interesting part of this car's history, this was one of the very first cars to run with a PDK, dual clutch gearbox. But today, since its restoration, it's running a conventional manual box. And that gearbox is connected to this quite incredible engine. Three litre, flat six, very much turbocharged, running 730 horsepower, I'm told. Now this is actually a brand new engine. Porsche is working on a project where it will sell effectively a box fresh Group C engine to customers that need them. And this car is the first one to run this engine. So really, this is as close as you could get to a brand new off the shelf Group C car about to begin its second life. So let's climb in and take a closer look inside. Okay, hopefully you can hear me okay. There's some pretty noisy racing cars going on in the background, but here we are inside the cockpit of this 1987 Porsche 962. Now, Hans Stuck raced this car in period. He's a bit taller than me. Luckily, there's a different seat today and I can actually reach all the controls. And in terms of the controls to reach, it's, it's very, very tactile, very old school. You have a manual gear shift here on the right, no power steering. The guys racing these for 24 hours must have had to be pretty strong and fit and then a nicely inverted tachometer just here ahead of me, and a key. Believe it or not, this car starts off a regular key from the production line. Notice Porsche's attached the key permanently to the dash, so there's no chance of taking the key away sneakily at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, ahead of me, this incredible sort of goldfish bowl dome screen. The next time I look through it, we'll be actually driving this car for real on the circuit. So. I'm gonna go off and prepare, maybe lie down in a darkened room or something and try not to worry too much. And I'll see you in a bit. Nearly time to continue a story that started 40 years ago with the 956. 1982, that car did its first race and began Porsche's Group C Le Mans story. And here, pretty much the biggest number of these cars that's been in one place at one time, probably since they raced in the 80s. There's so many cars here I've actually lost count. All kinds of liveries, plenty of Rothmans team cars. Some of these are from the museum, some of them are privately owned. All of them are gonna be in action on the track. None of them will be driven slowly and they're all going to look and sound fantastic. And just down here, there's a car we'll be running. We've just got it into position. The Dunlop car that you saw just a moment ago. And sunshine. And uh, yeah, what a place. So we all assemble on the grid in a Le Mans start formation, just as the sun is setting over Goodwood. It's a demo run, not a race, so we need to hold position and follow a pace car. But that car is a 911 GT3 that's been instructed to be driven as quickly as possible. 
So, without further ado, join us for a few laps on board the Shell Dunlop 962. Really quite addictive. When the boost kicks in, you just you just want more and more, and it it doesn't stop. It just it just keeps pulling. Three forward towards the scary quick corner where you have to keep your vision up. Now into the corner with no name before St Mary's. Flip on the throttle, down a gear, turn in. Little squirt of power then. Hit the brakes again, off the brakes, let the car run wide, take the power off again, wow that beast! <laughs> and the sounds it's making, some of the sounds of the, the, the flutters of the wastegate. Okay, let's give it a good run now, up towards the red line. Okay, approaching the final corner complex. The gearbox is so sweet, it's so user friendly. The car feels totally alive. The steering is such a, uh, such a short ratio. You just flex the palms of your hands and it uh, instantly responds. The nose tucks in. There's smoke in the air from the, uh, the bonfires that are lit through there. I guess maybe this is just a fraction of how the drivers felt at Le Mans racing these cars in periods. Drivers say they can smell the hot dogs cooking at the campfires as they're heading onto the Mulsanne Strait. I mean, my word, just imagine that dome screen ahead of you. Sunset on the horizon, the boost kicking in. And 250 miles an hour, a real possibility in one of these. In three chicane, more sun straight days. I mean, what a machine. I'm only barely scratching at the potential of this car. I mean, it, it could go an infinite amount quicker than this with a driver who really knew it, somebody like Hans Sturck who raced his car to international championship glory in 1987. Give it a squirt now. Wow. I'm starting to trust the downforce a bit more now. And the gearing is so long, using second gear in places that feel like they should be third. I'll tell you what. Even driving at these modest demo speeds, I've got a bit of a sweat on. <laughs> they definitely had to be pretty healthy guys to be doing double stints in one of these. Listen to that wastegate. Oh my goodness me. One last time through Lavant. Pick up the power. Hear that engine sing. All good things must come to an end. But the nice thing is, in a weird way, the Group C era lives on with all these cars, even though they're from the 80s, from the early 80s through to the end of the decade, or almost. They're capturing people's imagination like nothing else. I mean, just look. 
camera phones everywhere. And that's the checkered flag. A crust line, a, a blaze of beast. And now we'll let this let this special car cool down. What an honor to have driven such a special car, even if at slightly slower speeds than Hamstuck in the 80s. How special too to see it inspiring everyone around it. Seeing people's reactions to the car from inside is almost as powerful a sensation as driving it. The 962 and the Group C era might be in the past, but they're still captivating those who were there and those seeing it come alive for the first time. <laughs>